Tafa, we can't get away from talking about this, and that is Japanese monetary policy with uh, uh, Kuroda on the way out in April and likely Ueda uh, uh, taking over. Uh, I mean, both gentlemen have come out to say publicly in the last couple of days, look, relax, guys, nothing's going to change. Uh, it's still the same game plan. Uh, we're not going to rock the boat, etc., which is what you would expect them to say, both the outgoing as well as the incoming uh, BOJ uh, chief. Uh, we all probably also recognize that, uh, you know, this is something that they need to say, I guess, for stability. What happens after that, though? You're right. I think we would be overstating the case if we argue for a massive pivot as well as um, if we were to say it's just nothing's going to change, right? Our view is that they're probably going to maintain monetary easing, broadly speaking, but we're going to see some change. Um, uh, Weda and um, the uh, the deputies that have been nominated, they've all signaled awareness of the side effects of the current easing stance. So our view would be that they're probably going to dial back yield curve control in some form, the various options on the table. Uh, they might uh, widen the range around the 10-year government bond yield target, or they might shift to a shorter maturity. So um, those are the sorts of things that they're contemplating. Um, personally, I would think just dropping the policy altogether is probably the more logical option because it removes this line in the sand that always compels the Bank of Japan to push back against markets and it would give it more flexibility. So um, monetary easing, but um, with, with, with a twist, if you like, there's going to be some change. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, it'd probably take a heck of a lot of pressure off them as well in terms of uh, spending. They've been spending record amounts of trying to defend uh, yield curve control. Uh, the other thing we're watching, of course, is in order for them to uh, start exiting, right, and uh, normalizing a uh, monetary policy, corporates need to play their part, way, raise wages. We'll see what happens with the Shinto uh, spring wage negotiations. But I'm curious about those. How leveraged, I don't know how much work you've done on this, how leveraged is corporate Japan? Uh, right now, because we've had decades of literally free money, they must be sort of leveraged up to the eyeballs, and I don't think they could probably handle a, a too sharp or too quick a jump in rates, yes? I mean, the key issue is perhaps um, how to get them to to spend. Um, so it's it's not. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure leverage um, is 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 um, perhaps the key concern. Is perhaps more in the opposite opposite direction that they're sitting on these large cash piles and and putting them to use is is a key concern for policymakers, right? So um, whether that is happening, I think that's 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 still a bit uncertain. It's true that we've seen um, some big corporations announce announce very large wage gains, but the question is what is going to happen with the small and mid-sized firms which make up the bulk of the economy and the bulk account for the bulk of hiring. What they're going to do that's going to determine momentum more broadly and we still have to see more movement here. Um, yes. so certainly expect bigger gains this year, but is it going to be enough to get us closer to this 2% inflation yes. that the Bank of Japan would like to see? That's, 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 we're, we're doubtful. Hi, I'm Emily Tan and thanks for watching CNBC. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks for watching.